All right. As promised, I'm going to talk to you today about Greek versus Revelation. Now, I don't claim to be a Bible scholar, but that's really the whole point of what I'm talking about. You don't have to be and I don't have to be to understand what God is saying to you, to us in his word. Smith Wigglesworth said, I love this quote. Some people read the Bible in Greek and some in Hebrew, but I read it in the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. I, I love that because, again, some people, they just they don't really think that God that, that they can know what God is saying to them in his word without knowing the original languages. Now, the Bible was originally written Old Testament in Hebrew and the New Testament in Greek. And uh but understanding Greek and Hebrew does not guarantee that you're going to have an understanding of what God is saying to you in his word, because the most important thing is, and this is what I believe Smith Wigglesworth was getting to, is revelation of the word of God. You need revelation from God, no matter what language that that the Bible is in. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of that because I got had an opportunity to teach uh, in uh, in a Bible school in Athens, Greece, where everybody sitting there had Greek Bibles. But that didn't mean they had revelation. You see, in fact, the overseer of the school was an American and he had an interpreter who was Greek and they had Greek students. In fact, one of the visitors of the class, um, w when I taught, when I, I went there to teach um, for a week, one of the uh, visitors in the class was a Greek pastor, all right? And several of his students went to the school. Um, the, the so, so all these students sitting there were fluent in the Greek language that they grew up learning, okay? Now, let me let me ask you a very simple question. Now, they all are sitting there listening to me teach with their Greek Bibles. And every day they're listening to an American, even when I'm gone. <laughs> they've got an American teaching them the Bible. What's up with that? <laughs> okay. If you just stop and think about it. And, and there's so many. And, and I'm not I'm not against people who want to understand the Greek and all that, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have some special revelation or an advantage over people who don't. Okay. I know there are people who disagree with me, but just follow my thought process. Okay. I'm just an everyday dude. Okay. Talking about this. I'm not a Greek scholar, but uh, I, I got some, a little bit of sense. Okay. And I, and I got some revelation. I don't have all of it. I, I have some revelation. Okay, but follow me. If knowing the Greek, all right, gives you some special revelation from God, then why do they need somebody coming from America to teach them the Bible? Seems like they would already have all the revelation because they know the Greek. They're Greek folks, right? No, the reason why, okay, the reason why I was over there teaching not because I'm somebody special or the American who was overseeing the school was anybody special. But we have some revelation from God that they needed to hear. It's not that they can't get it reading out of their Greek Bible, but you need the Holy Spirit. That's my whole point of this. You need the Holy Spirit, a revelation from God through the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. It's not about learning the original languages of the Bible because languages change over the years. The best way, Smith Wigglesworth knew this, the best way to interpret scripture is to see how the Holy Spirit uses the words of the Bible. You can take a particular word and follow it through the 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 Bible and see how the Holy Spirit uses that particular word. You can go to a Strong's and find out what the word is in the Greek and follow that word throughout the Bible. See now, in other words, 
the best way to understand the Bible is to allow Scripture to interpret Scripture. No matter what your language is, no matter, no matter where you come from or the language you speak, you need revelation from the Spirit of God. All right? Now, going back to this class in Athens, I was teaching on faith. And in my notes, I had, I was teaching, uh, one of the scriptures I was using was Mark eleven twenty two. And in the margin of many American Bibles or English Bibles, it has a footnote by have faith in God. And the footnote says, have the faith of God in the Greek. They said that the Greek says, have the faith of God. All right. And that was in my notes. I was going to tell them that the Greek says, have the faith of God. Now, and this was in my, also was in my head. There, there was a book that somebody had written at the time trying to shoot down the message of faith. And he said that faith teachers were, were using scriptures out of context. And this was one of them. And he said, faith teachers say that this says, have the faith of God. But the Greek doesn't say that. He broke down the Greek and said that the Greek doesn't say have the faith of God, have faith in God. So I wanted to be right. So I asked this guy, because the last thing I want to do is stand in front of these Greek students and tell them what the Greek says, and they're sitting there with their Greek Bibles. I look stupid if, if it doesn't really say that. So, hey, maybe this guy's right. Maybe he doesn't say that. And I can still teach faith without without using that, okay, because faith in God's word works. We walk by faith, not by sight. I can teach that thing, I mean, without that, okay, but that's just another scripture that, that lets us know that we have God's faith. Well, anyway, I asked this interpreter before I went out and taught. I didn't want to make a fool of myself. So I said, man, read that to me. I didn't prep him or anything. I said, read Mark eleven twenty two to me out of your Greek Bible and interpret it back to me in English. And he, without hesitation, looked at Mark eleven twenty two in his Greek Bible and he said, have God's faith. I said, thank you very much. Bottom line in the story. Okay, so what was this guy talking about when he wrote that book? Then I found out that you can, no matter what, how much Greek you know, you can make the Bible say anything you want it to say if you want it to. All right, if you're just so dead set of, of something saying a certain thing and you want to prove your point, whether it's right or wrong, you can find anything in the Bible to prove the point and and people who don't know the greek just think these scholars are are experts and if they say the greek says that well it must say that well in this case this guy wasn't right okay so anyway i'm, I'm getting a little long today but um okay i guess if you didn't want to hear anymore you would have stopped by now so if you stand with me uh that means that you you wanted to hear this well anyway um, last thing I want to say, and we'll let you go. The word, as my friend, uh, Pastor Brian Hudson said this, the Bible has already been translated. We got all these scholars who have translated, given us a lot of these wonderful translations. So go to these many translations and, uh, and, and see what God is saying. See? Let the Spirit of God talk to you through these various wonderful English translations that we have. Or if you're in another country, whatever tr the Bible translations that you have, go to the Word. But no matter what translation you use, let the Spirit of God give you what God is saying. And listen to the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Okay? One more thing. With Google... You can even Google a word <laughs> and Google will tell you a lot of things. And then, but through whatever means you use for your Bible study, listen to the Holy Spirit for basic information of how to study the Bible, uh, where to start reading in the Bible. If you're a new Christian, how to meditate in the word of God. Okay. How to use a concordance. Go to or request my basic training manual, all right, that will uh, explain those things to you. Have a wonderful day.